Hi, my name is Susan Bianchi and I'm from Saratoga, California. My work and motivations change from piece to piece, but usually photography is involved. Sometimes an idea comes into my head and I search for an image that will complete or complement that vision. I've been known to look for years until I get what feels right. Other times I see an image and just need to create a version of it because of how it makes me feel, as well as the challenge of seeing if I can capture that image effectively. This was the start of my piece on the other side. My husband and I were driving from Ohio to Louisville, Kentucky and decided to stop at the Ohio State Reformatory where much of the movie Shawshank Redemption was filmed. The historic site is a mixture, beautiful architecture, the texture of massive quantities of peeling paint and rust, dark, cold, and just sad. A building with a lot of memories in its walls and none of them particularly good. My husband, Kurt, took a photo of this image. The dim light reflecting off the peeling paint of the hallway with the doorway lit from the other side, it told a story, one I wanted to retell using a mosaic of buttons and beads. I wanted to see if I could capture those reflections, make the viewer feel they had a choice. Do I walk toward the door or away from it? I know the image of doors intrigues a lot of people. Doors play an important role in everyone's life. We all know the mere act of going from one room to the other can make us forget what we were doing and returning to the first room will help us remember our original intent. They've done scientific studies on it and it's an actual thing. Beyond that, as humans, we're just naturally curious. Is the life going on behind that door better, worse, or just different than mine? I once heard a writer explained that when he was writing a book, he would keep coming to several doors. That's how he viewed his possible choices. He would choose to go through one and see where the story went. If it didn't work, he would go back through that door and choose another. I've always loved that image of viewing choices as doors, which is why I ask those questions. Which side of the door is the safe side? Which side of the door will lead you to a better reality? A lot of this quilt was made during the self-isolating period of 2019. It became a kind of therapy for me. In a chaotic world that had absolutely no control, I could for periods of time shrink my view of the world to what I could see in front of me. I had control over what I was working on and it provided a measure of peace. The tactile nature of working with buttons and beads was like having a worry stone in my hand. When I wasn't able to find the color and value of button or bead I needed, I made them from polymer clay, again, very tactile and soothing. One of the things I love about working this way is how it can be viewed. Up close, you see this tapestry of colors and texture from vintage to craft buttons to polymer clay. And then the further away you get from the piece, the more the image comes into focus and the more dimensional it becomes. Naming quilts is an important part of the process for me. Sometimes the names are clear from the conception of the quilt, other times it can be a struggle. There are times when you know the feeling it conveys, the questions you want to ask, the story behind it, but a paragraph is just not an option. Those are the times I go for help. My two go-to people are my son on the West Coast and one of the daughters of my heart that grew up with my son who lives on the East Coast. I texted them both independently with a paragraph of my thoughts on this quilt along with a picture, not telling them that I had texted the other. Within 10 minutes, I received identical text from each of them with the title of this piece, On the Other Side. It was meant to be. On the Other Side contains over 32,260 buttons and beads. Yes, I counted. For every 10 I sewed on, I made a tally mark. I made a deal with myself that if I lost track, I had to start counting over. So although the count is not 100% accurate, I know that it is certainly more than the 32,000 plus that I did count. Also, if I remember correctly, it weighs around 10 pounds. My sincere thanks to Quilt National for including my work with this group of amazing artists. It's truly an honor. Thank you.